Now, there's one more way that we maintain these relationships, and it, uh, it doesn't have anything to do with uh, these, although it works in tandem with these. Uh, let's go ahead and switch this to our Mac at Gray. And we'll turn this firmness down to three here. And one more time, let's hit B, C, K to go our cloth hook brush. Then we can start moving this cloth around. Now, if we go down here, so we're in the tool menu on the right hand side, and I'm going to go ahead and hold down shift and close these menus down and kind of clean this up a little bit. We have a morph target menu. So over here we can have a store morph target option. And what that's going to do is allow us also in conjunction with all these other things, let's turn simulation iterations back down to 100 as well, to maintain relationships. So we're going to go over here, we're going to store a morph target, and we're going to run the simulation with gravity. If we turn on polyframe here, or what might even be better, let's just use our cloth hook brush. So if we delete our morph target and we kind of pull this around, it'll allow us to kind of stretch that a bit. If we store a morph target and we start pulling this around, it's going to want to kind of yank back. It'll allow you to pull, but then if you take your brush and you just kind of wiggle it, see how it kind of snaps back to its original stored state? That's going back to that original stored morph target position, that basically that original relationship it had. Without that, the relationships are constantly updating. So without the morph target stored and you start pulling this out and you start pulling this out, we're creating new edge relationships. And if I go over here and wiggle, it's just going to wiggle over here on the end. It's not going to try and snap back to any previously stored relationship because we're just constantly creating new relationships. So anything new that we're moving is recalculating a new relationship. However, if we undo back through here, and we have this as our morph target relationship and we start pulling this out and we start pulling this out and start pulling this out. Number one, it's going to fight you a little bit more maybe, but also when we go over here and just start running that simulation, it's going to want to snap back to that original morph target relationship. Now, the original morph target, let's switch back over here to a skin shader for so you can see this. The original morph target usage, you could use it for a number of things, including fiber mesh and stuff like that, but um, you can go in here to BM. O, and that's your morph brush, and you actually morph this back. See, I'm, I'm using a brush to morph back to that exact original vertex positions. If we undo that, we can also do switch, and that'll switch the morph target. So here's our stored morph target. It's going to take those verts and push them back to the where the morph target store uh, is. And then I can use the morph brush to morph back uh, to where we had dynamically put that claw. So you can maybe use this to kind of fine tune your dynamics using the morph brush, as well as we, uh, you know, here's here's another thing. We've we've moved this out, and we say brush cloth hook BCK, and again set up a new cloth here. Let's delete that morph target, store a new one, and now as we continue to use the cloth hook brush, if we you know just kind of start it's going to want to kind of pull back to that new stored morph target that we have. So that's just another way to maintain those original relationships. If you don't have a morph target, you're going to be creating new relationships with these edges. If you have a morph target, it's going to want to kind of snap you back to that originally stored uh, vertex position that it has.